So, um, what does Karen do? Um, Karen does a little bit of everything, but I just say pretty much I'm a creator and CEO. And now you've got to a position where you're working with brands, you work with mm -hmm. celebrities. I mean, most people get quite mm -hmm. um, intrigued by the concept of, of moving in that, 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 that dynamic, mm -hmm. but making business through that. Where, where do you think that instinct came, came from? Seeing the business or... um, it was organic for me. Once I got the relationship with Beats by Dre, and here they are giving an influencer from New Jersey an opportunity to work with this organization and company because they heard about me through the internet. So again, here's the internet giving me what I wanted and me moving to Los Angeles and seeing more for myself. I'm meeting people and running into people and being into circles I normally wouldn't be in. You know, and I'm getting to build and have these ideas and instead of being comfortable in my position, I continue to grow. So, you know, I would use my time wisely. I wasn't at always at every single party or anything. To me, if it wasn't beneficial and it didn't make sense towards my progress and my growth, I wasn't there. So it took me going to, I was invited to this dinner by Twee Ann um, Nguyen, who was at Hennessy at the time. And this was probably, mm, probably five, six years ago. And she was like, hey, I want you to come to this dinner. And I had no idea who it was for. And I was like, great, you know what? Let me go. I'm not a drinker. I was like, let me go. I'll zhuzh my way through it, see what they're talking about. Usually, you know, people get intimidated by it. Like, nah, I don't know if I could bring a plus one. So I go. It's an intimate setting. It's people from Zagat and all these other things. And then here I am. And I was like, okay, they're doing Hennessy pairings and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I'm not really a drinker. But you know what? I'm going to make the most of it. Maurice Hennessy was there. And... I did. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to conform and pretend to be one of them and like, oh, mm, this is so good and be pretentious. I'm going to be myself. I'm like, I'm not pretty much a drinker, but this is cool and this. And then I just started having regular conversation and dialogue. And from there, he was just like, um, oh, here's my card. I said, OK. And he was like, yeah, let's stay in touch. And his next dinner, everything after that, they just always made sure I was at. And he was like, yeah, if you want to just if you want to bring people, I was like, I don't know if you want my people. And he was like, no, 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 I like you. And just the environment, he was like, you know, their stuff is cool, but it's a bit stiffy, like stuffy. So in case you want to just, you know, bring anyone, I was like, cool, well, I'm going to bring YG. I'm going to bring Nipsey. I'm going to bring, and I just started bringing a variation of people. And they loved it ever since. And that relationship right there, people were so confused. Like, how are you friends and have this relationship with this 70-year-old something man who owns this brand and other brands started to see it on social media and they started reaching out. So it, it took that Hennessy relationship growing to Louis Vuitton, to Tiffany, to everything else under the spectrum. It's just, it started from there and it was me walking into a room being myself, not conforming and pretending to know the product and everything else. And it's just like really being myself, asking questions that, that nobody in the room was asking and just, you know, letting my personality shine. You talk about walking into the room mm -hmm. and having these conversations. More importantly, just breaking down where you're starting from, from New Jersey, mm -hmm. decided to move into New York space, then going into these rooms with adults and different people. Yeah. How do you deal with fear? Um, ooh, you're talking to somebody who's like super timid, to myself, very quiet. But when you get in this room, you think, this is special. This is, uh, I always use like a sports, like a basketball analogy, but like this is fourth quarter. Like you have to make this moment count. So all of that goes away. And I'm like, Karen, you've prayed for this. You've worked for this. You deserve this. And these are the things that I say to myself to get myself comfortable. Like, no, I'm supposed to be here. Like I deserve a seat at this table and I'm gonna enjoy every moment of it. Along the road. Mm -hmm. And this is about going into the full road. There are lots of um, mishaps. Things mm -hmm. don't always work out. Setbacks. Mm -hmm. how, how do you deal with setbacks? Um, dealing with setbacks is interesting. Because um, you kind of determine what a setback is to you. You know, I go through life where it's just, I call them like hiccups now. It's something that, that happens and I continue to move forward. How you handle a situation is really up to you and it's your choice. 
And now I'm in a place before I used to mope, I used to cry, I would give up at a point, but now I'm not doing that. You know, it's just, I'm so comfortable with understanding a hiccup is a learning lesson, what I can take from what I can take from a situation, the career path that I'm in, I know I'm gonna have to take a lot of bullets for certain things. So it's just, I'm not letting it fuck up the armor. I'm not letting it stop me from where I need to go. And it's just a part of the process. So, you know, now I just continue to look at, look at the glass half full for everything that I do. What do you think people misunderstand about Karen? Um, definitely people are, um, the misconception with me is, where do my blessings come from? I don't work for it. I have did this, I've done that. Like people will believe in negative before they believe in positive about you. And another thing is people are excited for my career, but they're not excited that I have this career. And it's a very unfortunate thing, but I can't let naysayers dictate my energy, my space, where I'm at. And it's just, I'm just in such an unbothered state. Like I don't care at this point because none of this fuels me. None of it keeps me going. I'm not one of the ones like, oh, haters keep me going. No, y'all don't move nothing over here. You know, I, I always love positivity, whatever the case may be. It's just, but I'm not letting, you know, with the internet being so rampant now, it is something that helped build my career. But at the same time, I'm not letting it fuel me in any way because whatever fuels you can starve you. So I'm not, I, 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 give, it no, I give it no light, but that's just the biggest misconception is I haven't worked for this. They don't get it. What exactly does she do because they've, conform their minds to sticking to a title when it comes to especially black women. She's not in the beauty industry. Like one of my friends, um, one of my best friends owns a multi-million dollar hair company. In their minds, people still call her a hairstylist. And it's frustrating because I know she makes close to $5 million a month, but people still refer to her as a hairstylist. I'm like, she, we, she has an overall brand. She's just, but they'll see these titles for other people and not for her. Same thing with my other friend who is, she has a styling company. People will just call her a stylist. She has stores and she does these things. They'd be like, oh yeah, do you think she can get XY? I was like, no, she, she runs a full company. And one day, she, like her company is styling 10 different people all across the world. But to them, they're just thinking, oh, can she get me something for IG? I'm like, no, she can't. So it's not just a problem that I face. I just feel like because we don't have the standard traditional roles people are used to, the girlfriend, the wife, um, which is nothing wrong with the assistant or the whatever, they just don't see it for you. And at this point, it's just like, I say this in the most respectable manner, I don't give a fuck. I don't care what people title me as, label, label me as. I know I've worked for my career. I know I've built brands. I'm like the Olivia Pope to this shit. So it's just like, that continues to keep me going and fuels me. Not what little gnats are saying around me and buzzing behind me saying. How is it being a female, uh, a, a black female in the, the corporate slash? Um, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting. Some, you know, at first it was just like, oh, woe is me. I literally had someone tell me if you were a guy, you'd be so more far along in your career. And I was like, that's interesting you would say that. They were being honest, though. But at the same time, I'm like, whatever blessings are coming my way, God put me in this body and gave me the skin and everything for a reason. So I'm not going to let society tell me that this, who I am, my identity, is not a blessing. So I take, I take it for that. And it's continuing again, looking at the glass half full. There are times where I feel like my male counterparts will say something I just said or they'll say the same thing and it's, it's taken in. And when it comes to me, it's taken with like, oh, caution and they don't wanna move as fast and, and things like that. And I have to understand it is a boys club, but I don't give a fuck. I don't wanna be a part of your club. I'm building my civil regime over here. So you're gonna, whether you like it or not, I tell people, I'm like, cool, it's fine. You don't wanna listen to me. Eventually you will. They always come back. So. You either take the advice I'm giving you because it's coming from a place of, I know my shit. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not just making up fluff like, I live this. I know marketing. I understand branding. Where well, you can take in what I'm saying. You don't want to listen? 
fine, no problem. I'll see you in a couple of months because I'm going to give you the same advice. You should have listened before. I'm not one to like, oh, I told you so and everything else. But they always come back. You have so many titles, author, philanthropist. Mm -hmm. Creator. I just say creator. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more about some of the businesses you're involved in. Um, so there is my Live Civil brand, which is all things empowering. And now it's moving into the education philanthropy space. So when I say from an education space, I always get so many questions on how to build a business. So I have so many different, I have the Live Civil University, which is all about educating people in many facets of different things. So if they want to learn about, you know, who may not have the money, the startup money for whatever they're doing. So it's like you can learn about how to get your music on iTunes, to e-commerce, to just to building your social media engagement and so many different um, workbooks for different things to help you in that, in that space. There's the philanthropy space, which is just the live civil stuff in general. So we have the school in Haiti. We have um, a computer lab. June 22nd is Live Civil Day in Elizabeth, which is just all about um, empowering kids because that's the last day of school. So it's just about empowering them to go out, um, work out, just, just be in a space of, again, Elizabeth is very segregated. So it's making all the communities come together as one and it's just the power of play. And then we have uh, Live Civil Day at the Barclays, which is usually in December. And that's just about just giving back to a community who's, who's given me so much. Um, that's the live civil aspect. Always civil is branding um, and marketing for different people. Right now we have under the umbrella, we have Nicki Minaj, YG, um, Beats by Dre, um, Beats by Dre, YG, Russ. Um, and that's pretty much it for right now for that space. Um, and then what else is there? Um, oh, I have True Women, which I'm excited about. It's a vegan-based protein bar. Um, it's number one on Amazon right now. You guys should check that out, T-R-U. Um, and being vegan for two and a half years, it was just important to me to to create something because when I was, it wasn't easy to find food or something that I liked, that I identified with, that if I choose to be vegan or if I don't, if I just want to eat healthy, that people can um, that people can eat and people so far are loving it. So that's doing well. What else is there? Um, I said always civil, true. I have love, um, love out loud, which is LOL with YG. It's a, it's a kid clothing uh, company that we're set to launch in a couple of weeks. So it's just thinking of all the hype beast things or nice things adults wear. We wanna do stuff for kids. So it's just clever little sayings like, my mom's, my mom's type wifey, my dad got a bag, little, just little clever sayings that are just cool. Um, and let's see. Uh, I have my show on Complex, Good Looking Out. We're on season two. Um, and that's all about, it's like Shark Tank for millennials. And it's about helping the next entrepreneur with their business endeavors. So it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. People aren't gonna make me, I have had people like throw it back at me and, and try like, oh, she's in LA, she's not doing nothing. Oh, she's on so-and-so's couch. I'm like, it's better than what you're doing. You're talking about me. So I'm okay. I'm okay with that process that I had eight years ago when I moved here from sleeping on somebody's couch to buying my condo that I have now. I'm okay with that. 